Church of Christ. I want to continue with our Wednesday night uh, series of the essentials of faith. What what does it mean to be a Christian? What does it what does it involve? And uh, we we've talked about the fact that we're born again and that we're part of God's family. And this week I want us to talk about living by faith. As, as Christians, we are to be people who live by faith. That's that's an important part of it. What does the faith mean? Well, Jude 3 tells us that we are content, we are to contend earnestly for the faith. And, uh, and, and so the faith, what, what, what is that? Um, well, those who've been, uh, who follow God's will are counted as, as the faithful. Um, Acts 16, uh, verse 15 there, um, when she and her household were baptized, Lydia said, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. So she persuaded us, Paul said. And, and so the idea is that we are, that, that our lives exhibit the faith. It's not just something that we hold in our hearts or something that we believe as part of it. We're going to talk about that, but that we are living a life of faith. This faith is is the underlying principle uh, that guides our 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 conduct. It's it's fundamental. In fact, it's fundamental to our salvation. Romans chapter one sixteen and seventeen says, "I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first, and and also to the Greek." And he says, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. And and so we we live a life of of faith, right? It's central to how we live. Galatians 2.20, there Paul says, I'm I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. And so he he said, I'm living by faith. Now, the the nature of faith and what it does and what it is is often misunderstood, and then it's often neglected by the Christian. And so let's define what, what faith is, all right? Well, it involves the idea of belief. Too many times in the religious world, though, it stops there that they simply say, if you believe, if you, if you have a conviction that Jesus is the Son of God, that's enough. Well, that's part of it. Certainly, we have to, we have to believe. We, we have to do that. We have to believe who Jesus is and, and what his kingdom is about and all that. Listen to Acts 8, verse 12. When they believed, believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. The belief that they have, the conviction that they had that Jesus was the Christ, that he was the Son of God, uh, it was exhibited in the, the action that they took. In this case, it was, it was baptism. That was enough to do it. And so that, that conviction has to come by the word of God. Romans ten seventeen says, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Our faith cannot be uh, grown, it can't be developed because of our own ideas and our own thought processes. But but our faith, true faith, biblical faith, acceptable faith to God has to come because it is a direct result of, of hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, right? And so it is not just a simple mental assent that something is, is, is right. Uh, it is not just saying I believe something, but it, but it actually makes a difference in our lives and how we act and how, how we think. And, and so it, it is the idea of, of confidence, first of all. And that is that we're willing to, to trust someone else. Uh, we're to tr- place our trust in God because he is reliable, Right? Romans 4, 3, what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness, all right? And and so our our faith has to to be something that causes an action, right? 
and, and we're to have we're to have a similar trust in God as as Abraham did. And that is that we're willing to obey and we're willing to follow. First Peter 4, 9, 19 talks about God as a faithful creator. And so we have confidence in him. But it's confidence that, that moves us to act. It's the idea of, of fidelity, uh, the, the idea of, of trust and commitment. First uh, Corinthians 4, 2 says a faithful steward is one who can be trusted, right? He's uh, God can trust us, and that, that involves that. And so I, I, we have to be faithful even to the point of death, uh, Revelation 2.10 tells us. And so that is, it's not we're wishy-washy. Uh, when, when we're going to be people who live by faith, we, we actually live it out every day. We don't quit. We don't, we don't give up on that, right? And so a faithful Christian is one who believes the Word of God, has confidence in the in the person of Christ and, and of God himself and, and, is, and is trustworthy in his service. But, but let's, let's talk about this life of faith. Um, it involves confession. Uh, simply, simply means that we, we are willing to tell other people uh, that we believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. God does not want or expect us to be undercover Christians. He expects it to be very open uh, and, and part of our, our daily lives. And, and so we, we are people who, who confess our faith. It's something that we have to do as a uh, part of our salvation, Romans 10, 19, uh, Romans 10, 9 and 10 rather says. Um, and it's something that we do throughout our lives. Matthew 10, 32, Jesus said, he who confesses me before men, I'll confess before my father. And he who denies me before men, I'll deny before my father. And so it is not a one and done. It is not a one-time thing, but it is the, the very essence, the expression of our lives that we confess that he is the son of God. And so it, it is, it's one who's never ashamed to, to confess or to admit that he believes in Christ. And, and so it involves living our lives with, with trust in, in Christ. I mentioned Galatians 2.20 earlier. The life that I live, I live by faith in the Son of God. And that is the basis of it. And so we, we trust Jesus. What does that mean? Well, it means that we trust him for our salvation. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 3. Moreover, it says, brethren, I declare to you the gospel, which I preach to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are saved, if you hold fast to what I preached to you, unless you believed in vain, unless it was empty or worthless, he says. For, then he says, for I delivered first of all to you that which I received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. It is my faith played out in the person of Christ as the only one who can save me. I can't save myself. I can't, I can't do that. I can't do enough good things. Unfortunately, too many times we begin to think that if I do enough good things, it offsets the bad things that I do. And, and we think of it like a scale, but that's not how the Bible describes what happens. It is Christ's blood that cleanses us. And it is his blood and his sacrifice that takes away our sins when, when we submit to him. And so it's not enough good things that, that I might do. Uh, Titus 3, 6, um, Titus 3, 5 and 6 says, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Christ Jesus. It's not the good things that I've done. We are saved to do good works. There are things that we must do. And we must grow, and we and, and there there are things that God expects us to do and not do, and and yet I can't do enough. I can't give away enough money. I can't help enough people in need to merit my salvation. I do those things because because God saved me, and out of appreciation, I, I want to do what is pleasing to Him. But it's not just the good person who is saved; it's the one who accesses the blood of Jesus Christ and trust in his word and lives according to those words. 
In Matthew 6, and following when he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. He's talking about a way of life in which we, we trust him. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that, that we trust him enough that if he says do it, we, we do it. We, we, listen, we, you and I go to a doctor and if we have confidence in him and we're sick and we want to get better, we'll do what that doctor says to do. We'll take the medicine or the treatment or whatever it is. If, if we don't take that treatment, it could be one of several things. Either we don't want to get better uh, or, or it could be that maybe we don't trust that doctor. When we come to Christ with our sins and we say, I need these taken away, and he says, here's what you need to do. And, and we begin to say, you know, well, could, it, could I do it? What if I do this instead? What if I don't do that? Is this really important? Is that important? We're not trusting in Christ, are we? And, and so a life of living by faith means that, that we trust him enough to just simply do what, what he says. And, and our lives ought to be in harmony with the things that he taught. Now, there's some benefits that come to that. Certainly, uh, we, we want to be saved. We want to go to heaven. That's the a, that's a greatest benefit. But there are also benefits in, in this life, right? Uh, Romans 15, 13 talks about the hope and the, the, the joy and the peace and the, and the power that comes by, by following Christ. And, and it is through our faith that we receive those things. Listen to Philippians 4, uh, beginning at verse 6 and then verse 7, and then we'll skip down to verse 13. And there he says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ our Lord. And then down in verse 13, he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Those are promises that are given to the Christian in this life. That's something that we can hold on to, that we can have the peace that passes understanding, that we can do all of the things that we're called to do. And, and we have those, those promises. And, and, and even though heaven is our ultimate goal. We, we enjoy benefits here. It, it, is, it is not that God has said, I'll give you something in the future, but I'm going to leave you alone for now and, and you'll struggle through. No, instead he's promised to be with us and to give us some very great blessings. And, and that's why I always say Christians ought to be the happiest folks that you know, because they enjoy those blessings. Uh, yes, they have the hope of heaven and that's a wonderful promise. And that's our ultimate goal. But, but we also have the life that we live now and, and it's a joyful life. And, and Christ said, I came to give you life and, and to give you an abundant life, to, to give you a good life. And that's what he wants us to have. And so how do we do that? Well, we, we maintain our faith. Um, faith is not a one and done thing. It's not that we have faith and one time we believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God. The Bible talks about how we have to maintain and to hold on to that faith and to remain steadfast. Um, I, over and over again, the Bible says that our faith can be, as we saw earlier, vain or empty. It can do us no good. It can go away. It can fade away and all of those things. 1 Corinthians 15, the first couple of verses, Hebrews 3 uh, talks about how that Israel had turned their back on God and we can certainly do the same thing. And, and so we need to remember that. But not only do we maintain our faith, we're actually told that we need to grow our faith, uh, that, that we are to be like a, like a, a baby who, who grows to the point that they desire meat instead of milk, and, uh, and, and that we've grown and we've gotten deeper into God's word. Um, we're told in, in 2 Peter uh, chapter 1 that we're to add to our faith. And, and we're to add virtue and knowledge and self-control and, and all of those things. And so our, our faith is to be grow. We're to add those things to it. We're to grow in, in all of those graces. And so a Christian is one who, who takes faith very seriously. Uh, it's essential to be saved. It is essential to remain saved. It's essential for the life that we live now and for the life that is to come. And so the question is, are you living 
by faith. A Christian is one who lives by faith. Is that what you're doing? Well, well, that means simply that you have to follow God's word, trust him enough to do what he says to do. That's, that's what living by faith is all about, right? Do you have confidence in him that he can deliver what he promised? Do you have confidence in what he says so that you do obey those things? He says to do it. And you say, that's what, that's what I need to do. That's what I want to do. And so are you a trustworthy disciple of, of Christ? Because fidelity and, and loyalty uh, and, and a life of confession that Jesus is, is the Lord, that's, that's what we're called to do as Christians. And, and so unless we can answer yes to all those questions, we may not be living the life of faith. You know, when the Bible tells us to do something and, and we do anything less than that, we're, we're not trusting God. We're not living a life of faith. And so when the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, we, we want to grow our faith. We turn to God's word. That's the source of how we grow and how we live in faith. And, and when the Bible says that we're to repent of our sins, that means that we don't continue doing those things that would be displeasing to God. We turn from those things. And, and, and we're, we, our aim and our focus and our goal is to be pleasing to God, to do what he would have us to do. And so we, we live a life of faith. We repent. We turn from our sins. We confess Jesus as Lord, both in front of people, as, as he talked about, but also we have a life of confession that Jesus is the Lord of our life. And, and so we have, we have faith and we have repentance and we have confession and then the Bible says to be baptized. Acts 2.38 tells us when, when the people ask, what do we need to do? The answer was repent and be baptized. Jesus himself in the Great Commission said, you know, teaching them to observe, baptizing. That's part, that's part of teaching what Jesus wanted them to do. And baptize for the right reason, for the remission of sins. Not because we're already saved, but because it puts us into Christ, as Galatians tells us. Well, I hope you're living a life of faith. And I hope this study is helpful to you. I hope you think about the things that you do and how that's based on faith. Not just simply that we mentally say that this is so or that is so, but that it is enough to, to change the way that we act and live and do. And uh, hope to be back studying in person with you. If you need to get in contact with us, if you're not a Christian, we'd love to help you do that. If you are a Christian, but you've not been faithful, we, we'd love to, to pray with you. The Bible says that God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and that he wants all men to be saved. And, and that's, what he, that's what he would desire. And that's what we desire as well. Thank you for listening.